Can y'all hear me? Yeah. How come John Gray's pitching out of the bullpen for the uh, Rangers? I'm John Gray. Is it snowing in Colorado? I mean, <laughs> I don't watch a lot of Rockies games, so I haven't noticed. I can turn it on right here. Let me wait for this John Gray pitch to Matt Olson. Got him. Matt Olson's gone down looking at fastballs twice now. Oh, my God. It's got to be freezing there, dude. Yeah. Oh, you could see the breath. You could see the breath. Who's pitching for the Mariners? Castillo? Yeah, he's back. He's back. He got off to kind of a bad start, but he looks good now. Tough place to pitch in, obviously, with Colorado. Um, I don't think I had him that low. I, I No, I, I was actually a little bit higher on them than some other people were. Similar to the Padres. The Padres were more of an anomaly. I viewed last season as just a really terrible year for them. Uh, but I didn't, I felt like they could be competitive. What's happening to the Astros yet? Yeah, um, it's very interesting. Uh, it seems like right now, um, you know, we're 20 games in and I don't, people like to play those games of, you know, what's your level of concern. I'm, if you're eight games under, under 500 at any point in the baseball season, you should be concerned. Okay. I know there's a lot of baseball left, but as somebody who has watched his teams very often get off to terrible starts. It's a bad, bad place to be. It's a really bad place to be. You are working your way back up for the rest of the campaign. So, well, do I think Houston still has the firepower to turn this thing around? I do. The biggest issue that's playing them, number one, is, is injuries to the pitching staff. Uh, I mean, and depth. And I'll talk about that in a second. But they try, they've try. they been trying to build the super pen. And none of them are pitching well. Presley and Hayter and Abreu's been, been off his game. That's very surprising. Um, but look, what the Astros have been so good for so long. And I know that they their first great season was 2017, but they have been stable since 2015, really. So we're coming up on about a, de about a decade of baseball where the Astros have been in the thick of things, playing meaningful baseball through the entire 162. Uh, you know, sometimes they might have came up short, but sometimes they won the World Series, but they've, they've been very good. Um, the one thing that they have done, of many things over the last several years, is that they've gone all out acquiring assets at the trade deadline. That's what you do. You want to win a championship, you got to make some moves. You got to trade for Verlander. You got to trade for, you know, they went out and they got Trey, uh, Trey Mancini. They traded for Verlander twice, right? Trade for Granke. And with that uh, came a farm system that is now near the bottom of, of the league. As expected, there was a lot of depth that they got rid of. Now that they're at this point where they're experiencing a lot of injuries, especially to the pitching staff, the lack of depth within the organization to say it's getting exposed. Isn't like we knew it was a thing. It's not getting exposed. It's just, this is the natural order of things. So Dana Brown is in something of a delicate position here because he wants to maintain a team that is still competitive at the big league level, but he's got to rebuild their farm system too. And that's kind of hard to do at the same time, uh, unless you're the Dodgers or the Rays or one of these weird anomaly teams. So, um, they're in a delicate place as a team. I, I, I've I've tweeted before. There's you know, every year with the Houston, I say they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine, and they they often are. I'm, I'm teetering a little bit. Seattle Central no longer a doormat. Uh, ask me come playoff time.
It really depends on where they are. Look, if they're eight games under 500, I think those discussions will have to be had. Um, the Astros have had as talented a core of players as we as of this generation, really, with what they've been able to do. Um, but as much as they've tried, they will not be able to keep all those guys. One of their cornerstone pieces will finish his career with another team. I do not see that being Altuve. I don't think that it'll be Jordan. Um, I, I think they're leaning towards a Kyle Tucker extension. Bregman seems like he would be the odd man out in that situation. Worried about Yamamoto yet? Not yet, but because Kodai Senga had kind of a similar vibe last year at the beginning where he had that elite ghost fork pitch, but everything else was kind of pedestrian. But his stuff came along as the year went along. Uh, so I think that that will be the case for Yamamoto, but I'm surprised by his struggles. But the Dodgers as a team have looked kind of lethargic uh, right now. And I, you know, there's so much hype, but guys, the guys will turn around. Abreu at first base is liability. You know, that was a signing. This is why, look, sometimes everyone is stupid. That was a very low risk signing for me. When when they when they signed to Brave, I, I felt like okay, look, he's not going to put up the power numbers that he put up in uh, Chicago when he was at his peak, but he's going to put the ball in play. He's going to drive in a ton of runs, but there's a lot of lineup protection there. I thought he'd be a key part of their team. I thought like he would, in some ways, kind of take over where Yuli left off. I know Yuli didn't have a, the, his great uh, last year. Uh, I'm stunned that he's this bad, and I thought maybe last year. Uh, was just kind of a bad year for him because he was very good in October. He had a very good postseason. Um, shocking. I could see that, Griffin. Um, what are chances we trade some pitching for the O's for either May or Her Herstead? Um, ask me come deadline time. You following the NBA playoffs or not? Little bit. Um, you know, by the time we, the thing is I, even when I was young watching the Pistons and they were great, I always hated the NBA playoff format, not the bracket format. That's great. But the length of it, I, there's no, no playoffs to me. Playoffs means like you, you do, you do the marathon that is the regular season. And then the sprint that is the playoffs in the NBA. It's you do the marathon of the regular season to then do a second mini marathon that takes two months, the 16 teams or whatever it is now with the plans, I think is insane. Uh, I was at the gym, caught a little bit of Suns, Timberwolves. I know I'm not the first person to have this take. Anthony Edwards is a very fun player, man. He is a fun player to watch, man. I, I mean, he had obviously legitimately maybe the greatest in-game dunk I've ever seen. Who is the MLB sleeper team that can make a great playoff run? Uh, Bailey and I talked about this a little bit on Chris and Company. I, I think the Padres could. Max Clark looking like he's figuring out Lakeland. Yeah, I'm not. My concern level with Max Clark is actually very low. I think that for the most part, really, I think the all the concern people have for Max Clark stems from the fact that Wyatt Langford was taken after him and that he was still on the board when the Tigers died. If the Tigers would have drafted fourth and the Rangers picked up Langford, I don't think we would have any of these concerns that we have. I think it's just he's living in the shadow of a guy who at 22 years old got called up right to the major leagues, who, by the way, isn't doing anything. I mean, Wyatt Langford, 613 OPS, you know, he's he's over three with two strikeouts tonight. He's DHing, you know. Um, why do I hit on Torque so much and then beg him to go on your show? Well, I think it would be great content for one. Um, and, and what... I mean, I don't know. I, you probably, I don't know how often you watch my videos, but the thing with Torque is like how badly I want him to succeed and how disappointing his struggles have been. I mean, he was like my guy. Like I could not wait to watch Spencer Torkelson. And um, I'm going to be objective, but I also know based on interviews, he's not a combative guy. He's a very humble guy. Um, I think he'd give me a great interview. And I would, I would ask him about his struggles. I asked AJ about it, you know? Yeah, you know, honestly, Girod, I think that if there is a team, now that they have new ownership, if there is a team that I think is capable of in the 20s 
being what the Astros were to the 2010s slash early 2020s, I could see Orioles. They have a elite offensive core. Uh, they went out and got Corbin Burns. We'll see, um, you know, if he stays with them. But Grace Rodriguez has looked really good in his outings. Uh, they're going to find pitching. I think they're finally going to spend some money now with the new ownership. Fun team. It's a and, and a deep lineup. You know, what I've realized, man, with the postseason, this is kind of silly. There's three things that I've noticed. I think recently, if you want to make a deep run in the postseason. You need three things. Number one is a lineup that has very few automatic outs. It, it doesn't mean that every guy's an all-star, but like last year's Rangers were like this. The Phillies the last few years have been like this. Obviously the Astros. Just, do you have grinders? Do you have guys who are going to see a lot of pitches? Do you have guys who can hit home runs? Do you have guys who can create long innings and get on base? Number two, do you have two really solid starters? And if you do, last year, Gallon Kelly. Uh, you know, obviously the Phillies made their run with Wheeler and Nola. Rangers with Avaldi and Montgomery. If you have that, you know, that could carry you through multiple playoff series. And number three, you need a good back end of your bullpen. Now, last year, the Rangers had a disastrous fucking bullpen that turned out to be great, like the back end, <laughs> like uh, outside of maybe a few games in the ALCS, like LeClerc and Spores and Chapman were all pretty darn effective. Um, isn't the Orioles the same guy that built the gym? Yeah, Michael Elias was basically second in command um, in Houston for quite a while. So, I mean, perfect hire, right? I mean, he knows he knows the ropes. Um, he inherited, you talk about, very similar to what Lou now inherited in Houston, uh, a horrible situation. Because uh, if you want to, if you take over a baseball team, you want to have one of two things. A ton of talent at the big league level where you can field a team that's going to be competitive and win a lot of games, or two, a shit ton of talent down at the minor leagues that you can develop and turn into a legitimate core that can win you games. The Orioles had the rare distinction of having neither. They were a bad, bad team with some tradable talent. Obviously, Machado was ended up being traded. And a farm system that was terrible. That takes years. Like, I, I would say Harris did not inherit, 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 inherit a good situation but I think that there was more talent than we let on. It's just Avila was a fool and didn't know how to develop it. Um, and at least Harris took over a staff with Hinch and Fetter and, and Lund. Uh, they brought in Lund later, but um, that knew what they were doing. Uh, what's his face was not that fortunate. Juan Soto is one of the greatest hitters I've ever seen. Um, I'd throw 15 years, 500 million at him like that. And I wouldn't even think twice about it. Uh, I think he's a first ballot hall of famer. He's already 20, he's 25 years old. I'm saying that, um, you're right. G rod. I need to see it from the Yankees. Cause I need a healthy Garrett Cole or else they're not winning shit in October. But Cashman in all his stubbornness has finally addressed the issues that their fans have complained about, which is please for the love of God in the shortest right field in baseball, Get some, uh, get some left-handed hitters who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Soto is amazing, and I think Verdugo can be productive for them. Feels like the barstool part of your life is fading, and you're starting to relax a little bit. Um, I'll relax when I when the when I'm able to monetize. Um, look, yeah, I mean that was uh, and, and I'll I'll take a lot of you know criticism for that but that was a really tough part of my life man and, and i darnode went fucking deep again jesus and um and you know it's over there will be the thing is right now though you know losing my job today as opposed to losing it two years ago or a year ago is i have actual belief in myself that things will work out um whereas i think Often in my life, I've had a lot of people in my life who don't believe things are going to work out, that it's always going to be a struggle, that I'm always going to be here, that I'm always going to fuck things. Like, regardless of how it ended, say what you will about Dave. Dave has a pretty fucking good eye for talent, right? And Dave would not have brought me on unless he felt like I could have added something to the company. Now, I sabotaged it. But that won't happen again because um, I'm clean and I'm in a better place. But, um, yeah, I mean, 
I never expect Barstool to not be a part of my life. I, that's like saying that I'm, you, you know, it, somebody who gets divorced. Well, my my ex wife is no longer a part of my life. No, it's a chapter in your life. It's something that people know about. There's a large section of my audience that follows me or found me at Barstool. I'm proud of that. That's not like I don't, I don't have. There's trauma, but there's not trauma in the way where like I'm throwing out all my Barstool hoodies and shit. You know, uh, I just won't wear them as much. Um. He's been better. He's been better. Any update with John Boy? No, no, they haven't reached out. I mean, I, I think I make really good baseball content and I think I make good baseball videos and just good content in general. I mean, I think those John Boy guys are great, but that market, like the AL central market is not one that's tapped into a ton. Um, I mean, just, I don't know. I, maybe I'm way off, but like a, like with all this stuff, like a five, 10 second promotion before every tiger video. I mean, I think we underestimate like just how big my audience is. Sometimes that can be legitimate business and that can grow a part of their audience. That's, and I don't know what the metrics look like, but probably isn't as strong as it is in Chicago or in New York. So that'd be my pitch. I don't know if they'll ever reach out, but yeah, man, this one, um, I'm, I'm, if people ask about it or bring it up, I'll talk about, it. I have not been as, consistently posting about it for one. I think people just got annoyed. Um, but really year one was all about, it was about documenting it because part of it was, I felt like if I documented it, that forced me to kind of hold myself accountable and year two and, and beyond is just kind of about walking the walk. Um, you know, I didn't, I only posted the 500 days thing because it snuck up on me. I checked that app and went, Oh shit, we're at 500. Um, do I think Wenzel has a chance to stick with the Tigers? I think there's a chance when Andy Abanez comes back, we send McKinstry down and uh, uh, per, uh, Perez remains on the team. Uh, off the top of my head, Diller, the NL Central comes to mind because you have um, you have Great American, you have Wrigley, you have Bush Stadium. It's got to be the NL Central because I everyone says PNC is beautiful. Formerly Miller Park, whatever it is now, Great American Family Field or whatever. I don't. Um, I've never been to, and I don't. I've heard it's just kind of okay, but man, I can't. If you're looking at a list of best ballparks four of the top 15 um are from that division you know Ahmed that's a one thing that I don't think has been talked about enough is uh look the Tigers have had their struggles offensively they are getting nothing from either catcher right now um I, if this continues and I'll have to check his minor league numbers, I got to think it's getting close to Dylan Dingler time. But to me, that's just kind of a band aid. I don't know if he's going to, he's going to, uh, you know, plug in and, and hit right away. I think Jake will get better. Like I've seen Jake Rogers be good. How many games do you think Tigers? Are we including this twins one? I mean, if they can go back home at 500 or a game above 500, I think we're in good shape. I mean, look, I don't, with the way our pitching is lined up, like I don't go into games like, I mean, I always go into games worried, but I don't go into games with like this sense of dread. Like we got Mize going tomorrow. I think Mize can pitch a good game and we can win. Uh, I felt that way about Reese today, but we keep shooting ourselves in the fucking foot. Um, okay. Concern level is low. Frustration level is high. Um, 
Because to me, concern means this guy that we expect to be a very good major league player might not be a good major league player. I'm we're it's too small of a sample size to to have that concern. It's just annoying that we call up like that we call up these guys. And uh, Badu doesn't count. That was an anomaly. But we call up these guys who right away um, are so bad. So, so bad. And um, Keith is, is a prime example of that right now. Um, Worst movie of all time. Um, I don't. I could go to like, well, the room, but uh, those those are too easy. I'm trying to think of a movie I've seen in theaters where I remember just loathing it. I mean, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I had this as the worst movie of the year, the year that it came out, but one that stands out as just like grading nails on a chalkboard. Like I, I like, I want to leave this gave me a headache, actually gave me a headache was venom. Let there be carnage, <laughs> which is weird. Cause I didn't hate the first venom. I didn't like it, but there was something you have Tom Hardy who is a, a, a thespian, like an, a legit actor's actor that people respect in this movie, making a fucking fool of himself, like being a goddamn idiot. And it was, I just don't understand what they, understand what they were going for. Cause to me, Venom, what people complain about with Spider-Man three is that Venom was too goofy. And so in turn, they make two Venom movies that are so goofy. Like Tom Hardy should have tripped on a fucking banana peel in that movie. Like that's how goofy it was. Uh, and just loud, blobs of cg th being thrown into each other like edgy quote-unquote dialogue and it's weird andy Serkis, who's amazing directed that what are you doing andy it's aragon aragon was you know there was and somebody will do a breakdown of this there was that era when harry potter was huge from like 2000 um one to like 2010 we had so many like films that were based off of books fantasy books that tried to capitalize on lord of the rings and harry potter and aragon was like the biggest obvious like harry potter ripoff um then Twilight came out and Hunger Games and we got a bunch of young adult adaptations that were a little bit different than Harry Potter like they were still kind of fantasy based but we got like Divergent and uh was it Mortal Mortal Instruments City of Bones and uh Host which was also based on the Stephanie Meyer book um uh oh man there was a lot dude and like they were all bad. Like Twilight wasn't even good, but at least Twilight was financially successful. Any update? On, yeah, I'm not gonna. Everything's fine. She's awesome. Um, I personally feel like I I was way too open about that, and um, I should be a little bit more respectful sometimes of that stuff. But she's great. She's great. Maze Runner. Maze Runner was one that I heard was one of the few good ones, like or at least oak okay, acceptable adaptations. Um, doing any NFL draft stuff down? I don't know. Uh, we all love the Tigers, but the team isn't particularly likable. You see, I actually disagree with that. I find this team quite likable. Um, I think it's yeah. No, I I would argue the teams that we had that when they were really good with Miggy and V Mart and Prince and Verlander, like they were fun. But I, I would say. And who gives a shit about likability? But like, this is, um, I find this team likable. Yeah. I mean, they have a likable manager and, you know, I, I like Riley. Like the personalities aren't the problem. Yeah. You know, Harrison, he's been, I didn't see that. Um, 
but he's been so good so quickly that there's a part of me that thinks the other shoe has to drop at some point. Um, meaning that there has to be some flaw in his game that he'll have to adjust to. Because he's been so great, you know, since immediately uh, being acquired. Um, that's tough offense to face. Baltimore, there's not a lot of easy outs. Number one, yeah, no, I remember it was music. Music, like, I don't know. I feel like if I went back and watched music now, I would just kind of find it, like, pathetic and almost funny. Um, Whereas, like I said, Ven- I, I couldn't watch Venom 2 again. I'm not, man, no. I'm sure many people are. But... Little bit, little bit. Now he had two really bad at bats at the end today, so I, I can't guarantee anything, but a little bit, yeah. No, he's here to stay. No. I I I think the extension put an end to that. And when I talk to him, Dusty made to the tournament year one. Okay. I'm glad you asked about that. I really, really liked the Dusty May hire. He was the guy that I wanted. Um I think he is doing a he is busting his ass in the portal right now. There is so much, so much that they need to replace or fix. I have a hard time believing tournament year one. I mean, they're they're adding players. They're adding some players I think will be pretty good. But man, oh man, they have that. Talk about inheriting a mess earlier. I mean, that's that's a tough situation. I think that he will do a wonderful job. I'm very high on him. Like I think, I think he could do some great things uh, for this program. I think that in a lot of ways we can get a, he won't be the tactician and the strategist that beeline was, but a beeline type who is capable of, of adapting to the modern age and, and, and NIL and the portal and all that stuff. Um, you know, he really cares about that. I think he'll do a great job, but tournament year one, that's tough. I mean, it's a big 10, regardless of how good or bad the big 10 is, it's a gauntlet to go through every year. Um, Rutgers going to be a top three big 10. Th- they have a really good recruiting class, don't they? Yeah, I know they had a down year last year, but like, I, I just think Steve Peichel does a fantastic job. I've always liked him. In fact, I, I didn't think it would ever happen, but like, if if something went down where Dusty May turned down Michigan or something like that, I feel like I, I would have liked to see Michigan go after Peichel. I think he does a whole lot with, with what he's given there. Did I hear Juwan on Warden and I own everything? Yeah, um... It's weird because from what I've heard, Dusty May has already made a lot of headway giggity in the NIL market for Michigan, which is weird because Ward Manuel is still the athletic director. This is just my theory on this, and I could be completely wrong. Um, But I think the, the slap incidents, which sounds so weird to say, when Juwan slapped that coach of Wisconsin, I think that put a huge damper and a big freeze on the commitment to NIL stuff regarding the basketball program. I think that they knew they had a very delicate situation with their coach. They didn't have complete trust in him. And that's how you ended up, you know, with Terrence Shannon falling through and Caleb Love was never going to come here. But like, 
you know, some of the recruits falling through and, and guys not staying in school. And, and now that Dusty May is here, I think that there's a greater sense of trust. This could just be a theory, but uh, May's kind of cleaning up in areas where it feels like Jawan tried to and just couldn't. Uh, now, regardless uh, of, you know, of what happened or what would have happened, by the end, I had such little faith in Juwan's ability to develop talent that they could have gotten whoever they wanted out of the portal uh, or anyone they wanted uh, recruiting, and I, I don't think it would have made much of a difference. Vladimir Guerrero was struggling. Is he on the way down? Um, He's had one great season. It was 2021, which he spent half that year in uh, uh, playing home games at a minor league ballpark. Um. On the way down, no. But I think this is who he is. I think he's substantially closer to C.J. Crone than he is to Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, too many ground balls. Now, when he lifts the ball, he crushes it. He hits the ball hard. That's not a concern. Not some elite athlete, uh, but he has been relatively durable. Um, But... It's weird. I, I worked for the Lug Nuts in 2017, and guys, I'm no scout, right? But both him and Bichette were on the team. I was always more impressed by Bichette's consistency. Now, Bichette, Bichette has a chance, you know, has the ability to chase and does. Um, but he's he's adds value defensively. Uh, whereas Vladdy, I saw a ton of power. Um, but I think at this point, I mean, it's year six for him. I think it's just kind of the time that we accept. This is probably just who he is. Do I think the Blue Jays should consider trading some of their pieces? Ask me at the deadline. Uh, they're a team that I think is maybe closer to not a full rebuild, but something of a reset than people might let on. Um, because it feels like their win they've <laughs> that window has been closed for some reason when it should be wide open for like the last three, four years. At what point do I get concerned about employment, start getting proactive about it? Uh quite a while. I, I That's, I'm, I'm in a pretty good place with that. I, I'm not that concerned. What teams have impressed me so far this season? Well, Cleveland. I like what I've seen from the Guardians. Uh, and that was the one team I felt like I had too low on my list. Um, I know they got off to that horrible start, but I think the Mets look a lot better. Um, the Yankees, obviously, uh, have some really good juju with Soto coming in and playing fantastic. Um But, um, yeah, I think those are probably the main ones. Uh, I know some people have been impressed by the Pirates. I think they'll fade. I think the Royals fade. Uh, the Orioles are going to be really good. Um, yeah, that's probably it. Mets doing this without JD and Senga. Yeah. I'm curious about that as well, Diller. I, I guess they've been hush hush about it because if they had another year go completely off the rails, then I could understand them like at the deadline doing something. But uh, to me, Pete Alonso isn't that. I, I mean, these guys don't grow on trees, you know. Um, you got pop in the middle of that lineup. That's not going to fade for quite a while. They're still relatively young. Um, I definitely hold on to him. Uh, close their window. No, but that was a bad trade. Um, I understood the reasoning behind that trade. They wanted to get more athletic. Varsho had a surprisingly great year in 22 with the diamondbacks. 
But they gave up on Moreno too quickly. He's a very good catcher. Um, and uh, I said I lost my train of thought here. And ultimately, I think that organizations sometimes they try to become like five tool teams. The Blue Jays' offense was their strength, offense and their starting pitching. And I feel like they kind of took away from that strength by going out and getting a solid fielding average at best hitting um, outfielder. Now, he's had a few good games lately. Am I a fan of the Lions? Yeah, I think they're great. I think they're awesome. I think they did a fantastic job. Um, yeah. No, he'll be fine. I love Corbin Carroll. Is it too early to say Carpenter is now a lock to be a long-term part of the Tigers' core? It's <sighs> a good question. Um, well, I guess what do you mean by that? Do you mean he's here to stay, if that's what you're asking? Do I think that they he will be first in line to get a long-term extension? No. Um, I, I don't see that becoming a possibility until it's proven that he can at least be adequate against lefties. But um, he's a very good hitter. He's a very good hitter, and he's a confident player. Um, you know, he, he might not add as much value as people think because he's not a good defensive player at all. Um, but he's been the most consistent bat on this team the last two years, and really since he got called up, uh, he's hit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think – I think the next time we make the playoffs, Kerry Carpenter will be on the team. Do we think Mike Trout ever gets traded? It pisses me off that he's on the Angels still. You know, I don't think he does. I think he's content or held that on playing his entire career at uh, in Anaheim. And that's like some Stockholm Syndrome shit to me. Like, I, I do appreciate loyalty in sports. Okay. And I think sometimes we don't get enough of it right in the NBA. Like, you know, so somebody puts on their sock backwards and they demand a trade, right? Like it's, that's lame. But as great as Mike Trout is, there will always be a, yeah, but if he doesn't find himself on a contender in the near future and not some like Tracy McGrady shit where he's coming off the bench and makes it to the world series. And he's like the, you know, some fourth outfielder. No, I mean like as a legitimate contender. I don't see that happening in Los Angeles for a long time. They have the worst farm system in baseball. They can't develop players for shit. They're the same. What's weird about like, the Angels is they've been the same team since 2016. Like that's what's weird is it's not like they have, okay, now we're going to bolster the offense. Now we're going to bolster the pitching. No, it's, it's a bunch of, it's the same like pubescent looking soft tossing starters and a lineup with like four guys that are pretty good and then a bunch of nobodies. Worst defender, Tork. I mean, Tork probably hurts some more. That's why you put those guys in right field and left field because it's less of a premium defensive position. Um, Offensive position, I would say, I'd like to get another wide out, another legitimate wide out. One defensive position, either secondary or get somebody else on the D-line who can match with, with Hutch. Yeah, I um, they're a mystery to me. They are a, a mystery, um, and, and yeah, I mean, look, Trout is obviously an all-time great player. He was the best player in the world for a decade. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer if he retired today. But man, um, not doing himself any favors, you know. And he's having a great year. No, no, I, dude, this is one of these situations. I have full faith in Brad Holmes, so, like, I'm just going to let him do his thing. Very little. Some highlights. I mean, I can't. The thing with me, man, is when I get to baseball season, it is – especially those early months, 
it is hard for me to focus on anything else. You know, by the time we get to summer, I want to watch the NBA finals. I'll watch it. But like, I am so baseball focused right now that that takes top priority. I, I can't even think about Michigan football right now. But since you asked, um, I think they're really going to struggle offensively next year. I mean, I, I think they had so much talent. They didn't even know what to do with it last year. Like guys, I really like, like I love, you know, Kojo and Roman Wilson, like, you know, with the offense that they had and the scheme that they ran, there was so much talent and so much depth. A lot of that is gone. And ultimately, look, there's a lot of reasons. I would say the coordinator hires are a huge one. But there's a lot of reasons why Harbaugh was able to turn things around those last three years. But, man, I'm telling you, J.J. McCarthy was the only quarterback that he ever had that you actually had to game plan around. The only guy who could legitimately beat you. And – um. I don't see it with either one of these guys, whether it's 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 Tuttle or Davis Warren or Orgy. Like, I don't, you know, JJ fired the fucking ball at people, man. Like, he would, you know, he was a legit talent um, that you, you know, and people can poo poo it all they want and the numbers. JJ was great. And they do not win a championship without JJ. They don't win a Big Ten championship without JJ. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, I could think it could be a three or four loss team. I, I think it'll be good defensively, but they, kind of always have been like the Don Brown defenses would be real until the end. We're very good. And then they, you know, would get shit pumped by Ohio state better actor Schwarzenegger Stallone better actor is to me, no contest. It's Stallone Stallone as Rocky. Uh, you could say it's something of a, you know, the rank. No, I would say that's wrong though. There is, he does show range Stallone in Creed is better than any performance Schwarzenegger's ever did. Now, Schwarzenegger's taste for action movies and Schwarzenegger's movie stardom, I find more interesting and more fun. Arnold, when Stallone made dumb shit, it was just dumb shit. Arnold had a way of making tastefully dumb shit. Commando is so stupid, but it's awesome. Like, because of him. Uh, I also think Schwarzenegger, with his big action roles, there was a little bit, he did a good job of working with good directors, like Total Recall worked with Paul Verhoeven. Um, the Terminator movies, obviously working with James Cameron. Uh, Predator's awesome. Uh, that's a pre Predator's one of those badass movies. And, and it's, it's a movie that would never get made nowadays because it's so simple. It's you have these, these mercenaries, they go out into the forest and they find an alien that's killing people. And you have Stan Winston, the late Stan Winston's incredible design of, of the Predator. And it's just macho and fucking one-liners. I mean, there's one-liners in that shit that, like, before we even get into the jungle. Dylan, you son of a bitch. What's the motto? CIA got you pushing too many pencils? Predator rules. Predator rules. The thing that I think Stallone and maybe the roles he plays in the movies he's been in do doesn't get credit for is he's a very smart guy. Who needs an extension first, Goff, St. Brown, or Sewell? It's a good question. I think it'll go St. Brown, Goff, Sewell. Um, I don't want any any of those guys wearing another uniform at any time in the future. Um, I think Sewell is and I like the other two, or is as close, probably going to be the closest to the Hall of Fame of any of those guys. I mean, I, I don't know if he's peaked yet. I, I don't, when I watch football, I'll be honest, I don't pay much attention to the offensive line. I just, you know, create holes, like run the ball, you know, protect your quarterback. Sewell's one of the few offensive linemen ever that I'll watch. And it's like, he, he will wreck, I will watch him wreck dudes. First half of the NFC Championship last, last year, he was just fucking steamrolling. Um, so yeah, um, I, I think all three of them will, will be here to stay in Detroit, but I think it'll go St. Brown. Because I think, and I love Amon Ra. I think they want to get Amon Ra an extension before he peaks. Um, and I don't know if he's peaked yet. You know, next year especially, like if J-Mo can break out at all, you know, we could be looking, I mean, what that opens up for the offense. You know, Jake, I, I know PFF has this stuff, right? I and maybe there is a number like this. I wish there was like a wins above replacement for football players where I could 
properly judge like how important these guys really are. Cause that take, like, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I don't have like the evidence to support it. You could be right. He's probably as good at his position as almost anybody else in the league, which how many, and I love the, the this Lions team, but how many guys in the Lions can you say that about? Right. Um, he is as valuable to this team as almost anybody. Right. Um, but because it's it's not a skill position, it, I'm not gonna say it gets overlooked because he, he I mean he was an all pro last year. Um but yeah, no, it's a fair point. Very uh, eclectic questions tonight. You guys have been good. Best and worst holiday. Um, My favorite holiday. Okay, good question. When it's done right, my favorite holiday is Halloween. Problem is I don't, I haven't had a proper Halloween celebration with friends and everything for a long time. The, my favorite holiday just in general are the holidays. It's it's Christmas. Like I, sometimes your family can ruin it, but in general, I love the vibe that comes with Christmas. I do like seeing family that time of year. And it is like, I don't know. It, I do actually, it's manufactured, but I do buy into like the pageantry of the kindness that comes with Christmas and the resetting of a new year. Like that's, I, I think that's all cool. Um, Worst for me, um, and this is very much subject to change depending on how, is is Valentine's Day. Because it's, I think in general, most holidays are made worse if you don't have a huge social um, group. But um, that's the one where like, in order to enjoy it, it's like in order to enjoy St. Patrick's Day, you got to get liquored up, right? Now I can't do that anymore. But that's like a kind of a prerequisite in order to really enjoy Valentine's day. You kind of need a significant other. So for the time being, that's probably, you know, not on the top of my list of favorite holidays. Any bad blood with anybody at Barstool? You know what, man? I, <laughs> there's things I'm upset about, but no, I, I mean, I, I think people want me to say Francis, but Francis did me a favor because I was never told that like I was, permanently going to be excluded from content that was never something that was relayed to me um i i figured that you know things were kind of like stable like i was at the nfl draft show i was at the barstool awards like i remember doing these live streams saying i was surprised i was a part of that but i'm like okay i'm i'm still i'm still a part of this um i'm just not a part of chicago uh, and then eventually um like i was reaching out to people i was trying to have conversations with a lot of different people some got back to me some didn't but it was like this weird, like, what's going on? And then when he wrote that, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it sucks to read it. But it's like he kind of did me a favor by being like, he finally told me what everybody else was thinking. Um, and I guess, well, you know, I, I get what he wrote. Like, one of the reasons why people didn't say anything was fear that, like, I don't know, people thought I was going to kill myself or something. I mean, I was um, – I didn't present myself well in those months. And I, I, I wish I could take that back, but I can't. But – my biggest annoyance in life is feeling ignored or being ignored. I think that everything can be solved with a healthy conversation. And while I wouldn't call what he wrote healthy <laughs> necessarily, uh, same with what I wrote, obviously. Um, I appreciated the fact that he was uh, open. Um, I was a really hard person to work with th that last year. I was a really hard person to work with. A and people probably separated themselves from me because uh, – because of that. Um, now, the sad truth is I feel like I would have been in a better place had I been able to collaborate more. But, you know, you can't expect handouts. You can't expect favors. Um, so, no, there's no bad blood. There's I'm, – and I'm, I'm not even getting into this. There's one guy who didn't make me mad but legitimately upset me on the way out because he was somebody that I considered a friend. And then we haven't talked since, but – kind of publicly 
went on the company line of shitting on me and I was like, wow, I thought that was somebody that like I could confide in and rely on. And they kind of just like gave me the middle finger on the way out. Beyond that, no, I still got a lot of love for Barstool. I always will. Even if you have a significant other, Valentine's Day sucks. Never know how hard to go on to get fair. I, I guess as somebody who needs to find ways to occupy their, their time and if somebody who's kind of lonely, like I would love, I would love to stress out over buying somebody a gift, you know, but teach their own. I get it. Like Craig Kimbrell has been pretty good for the, uh, for the Orioles. That won't last though. Terrible October pitcher. Not great, great out in Castillo going into uh, Colorado and shoving. Always like Luis Castillo, man. I know he got off to kind of a bad start, but he's, he's going to turn around. Fair. I mean, it is. All holidays are manufactured. And Valentine's Day does feel like the most manufactured holiday because it's it's a month and a half after uh, the the holidays, right? So it's the middle of winter. Everyone's miserable, and it's it's not, it's not quite the craziness. We're too far out to like anticipate St. Patty's Day and the big summer holidays, Memorial Day. Uh, 4th of July are way far out. So it's like they just decided, okay, we got to plant a holiday in the middle of winter so people don't blow their brains out. Um, it's just my theory. I could be wrong about that. Best Gatorade flavor? Probably red. But, you know, at the same time, I don't I don't really see color. I saw, because of Livy Dunn, LSU won the national championship in gymnastics. How This is a weird question. How does one go about winning the national championship in gymnastics? Are there judges? Do you get scores? Like, is it, you know, best somersaults, right? Like, how do you, how do you rank that? Um, because, and, and honestly, okay, I didn't, again, I'll plead ignorance. I didn't know that Livy Dunn was actually a really good gymnast. <laughs> I just thought she was just an influencer. Um, so she's got a natty. Paul Skeens has a natty. Like an LSU women's basketball won it. Dude, LSU clean it up. I mean, it's been a minute since they won it all in football, but still, I mean, they're going to have 2019 forever. He's been great. He's been great. I tweeted that out, man. He's looked fantastic. He's uh, he's really kind of turned things around. It's cool. I, I always like Barrios. Okay, makes sense.
Do I think there will be a day where I do a tell all bar tell all barstool interview and set the record straight? Um. Okay, look, my answer is I have no plans to. Um. What I want to do truly at some point, and you got to let time pass with this, is. Uh. It's been a month. I want to give it more time, separate myself from Barstool as they obviously can separate themselves from me. And then I want to circle back around and in private speak with some people um, about some of this stuff um, and what happened because there's a lot of people that I took shots at. There's a lot of people that took shots at me um, that I would like to – I would like to repair those relationships. This is – probably hypocritical considering the way I acted down the stretch there, but I generally don't like being mean to people. I don't like being like confrontative. And what really kind of broke my heart is as much as I love Barstool, I never wanted to be a part of that part of Barstool, the part of Barstool where everyone's fighting and bickering. Um, but I set myself up for it. Uh, so what would happen instead is nothing that's public, nothing that's, scandalous but i would like to talk to some people and just kind of maybe repair some relationships um before you know i talk about anything um and and the reason the biggest reason for that is the way that i thought dave handled my separation from the company was very professional um you know he didn't go on the air and shit talk me or not that i expect him to but or motherfuck me or or say something where i couldn't defend myself uh it was amicable and because of that i feel like there's I owe them nothing but respect at this point. My number one goal is to mentally, whether I end up back there or not, and I don't think I will, um, is to mentally get back to the point that I was or present myself as the person that I was when I started working there, which is somebody that brought good vibes, that people wanted to be around, um, that people believed in. Uh, no, that's kind of my biggest goal because I, I know what I can be when I'm right. Um, yeah, man, some, some, ESPN, dude, used to have a fucking awesome block of shows. And I'd like the only ones that are still around or like around the horn in part of the interruption. Like ESPN used to be very creative with their networking. Stump the Schwab was a great show. Yeah. I mean, I would love to go back and watch it now with the knowledge that I have. Now it might've been, you know, Stump the Schwab was like 04, 05, but yeah. Um, that was uh that was a cool show. Rest in peace. Yeah, that was that was crazy to see. For your sobriety, do I still go to meetings or have a sponsor slash support? Okay, yeah, that's – when you're in rehab, there are meetings every single day. You have – they're mandatory. You have to go to them every single day. And they tell you the second you get out of rehab, go to meetings. They, they preach, go to 100 meetings in 100 days. And when I originally got out, truly, I did – make the attempt to go to meetings or attend meetings when they were, whether they were virtual or in person. And my stance on that, and I, I don't want to lead people astray, but my stance on that is if you find comfort in those meetings and going through the steps and finding a sponsor and connecting with a higher power, I absolutely recommend that you do it. I don't want to stray anyone away from that. It's been proven to be something that works for people it really does. Um, I never felt comfortable in the meetings. I never felt like I connected with the people in the meetings. Um, I was often a lot younger than the people there. And even more so, I just did not share the religious values that they shared. Uh, not that that makes me right. Obviously, religion is a subjective thing. But I, I'm very much a skeptic. And the last thing I want to do is argue with people or bring down the vibe. So when I go there, it was just, it was hard for me to make that connection. So I've, the alternative is what I've done, which is you kind of go about it alone. And I, I'm not going to say that what I've done is the healthiest way, 
But I think for me and my kind of living situation, I think it's been the only way that I could go about it. Um, you know, I, that like icebreaker group talk stuff, just, again, it's just, it's not for me. And that doesn't um, make me uh, any better in sobriety than anybody else. Um, I wanted to go about things my own way. Uh, and I did, you know, whether it was, you know, getting clean and I tried edibles and stuff for a while and like to cool anxiety and it worked, but it didn't. But like my whole thing was, I knew that I was addicted to alcohol. Um, and I knew that in my number one goal was to try to find that relaxation from within. Uh, and I tried, you know, I, I tried edibles. I tried weed for a while. Um, you know, it was kind of half-assed attempts, but what I realized ultimately, and I think this is why passage of time with this stuff is so important is I just felt better and more productive with a totally clean head. And I know some that bothers some, some people. It's like, well, that's not total sobriety to me. It is because I could take or leave weed. I could not take or leave alcohol. Uh, meetings are shit. If you truly want to be sober, you will be sober. And if you don't, um, I, I don't, I can't go with that. Look, if, if people, cause I've seen so many people who've gone to the meetings and find comfort in the meetings. Um, you're right in the sense that, you know, to quote Batman begins, will is everything, you know, the will to act. You, you have to make sure that you are putting in the effort, you know, the meetings won't save you. Um, Uh, do you see yourself ever working there again? I take it you're talking about Barstool. Um, I'll just, I've been asked this before and I'll just cut it off right now before anybody clips this. I would be very surprised if they ever had me back. I, I, I think with the way things ended, I think I pissed off a lot of people. Um, I don't think whether short term or long term, that would be something that would even be considered. If, however many months, years down the road it is, I've put myself in a place where one, I can take criticism a lot better two, get along with others a lot better. And three, just be in a mentally better place than I've been. Absolutely. I, I, I would want to work there again. Um, passage of time heals things and you grow and you learn. So, um, yeah. Am I proud of the content you've put out so far post Barstool? Are you still, are you feeling encouraged and love what you're doing? I'm happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I, the numbers are the numbers. Um, but you know, I think the tiger videos are better than they've ever been, you know, at, with each, at, the thing about baseball, man, is there's so many games and each game that I watch, I become smarter and more knowledgeable about my team and about the sport. Um, so like, I think that they're better than they've been. Um, I'm proud of Chris and company. I want it to grow. I really do believe in it and think it can be something great. Um, but that will take time. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a lot of regrets. One of them is like, I, I had Matt for a while. If I would have found Austin or an Austin type, say year and a half ago at this time, um, I think things could have been different. I just felt so crippled by the lack of resources. Um, and finally, when I got so, 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 like, just fed up and I was getting shit on so much by people saying, do content, do content, was when I found Austin. That was a, you know, it's a perfect match. I mean, we've gotten along great. He works incredibly hard. Um, Well, we have monetized it. It's just we're making little money. <laughs> I, I don't know, Diller. I, I've always imagined either Dave or Big Cat would pull a, a Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight Rises and find a younger successor with similar vibes and values to them that could take over the company not in a way where it would probably be more successful but just in a way where that tradition can be carried on
Do I feel like the most lost you've ever been with content was when I had the tweet crowdsourcing ideas? Feel like people were hard on you for that? Good question. No, I wouldn't say that was the most lost. It's around there. Um, when was I the most lost with content? Uh, I don't know if it was most lost with content, but I remember when Barstool had their college football show at the Michigan Ohio state game. And I went there and I was just like in the back of the crowd and people, you know, and the fans are awesome, but people are coming up to me being like, Hey, don't you work here? I was so glad Michigan won that game or else that day would have been the shittiest day. Um, so I, I, Again, I didn't, I should have seen, you know, and appreciated what I had, but I remember when the bar stool basketball invitational happened and that was like the big, like not opening, but just all the people that were in Chicago were there together and having fun. I remember watching that and being like, yeah, I just feel like I just felt lost and, and that's, that's my own fault. I should have just kept my head down. Um, but I always wanted, you know, quote Hamilton. I wanted to be in the room where it happens and, you know, to be the living embodiment of the SpongeBob meme at that point was uh, pretty devastating. I, I really do think regardless of the way things ended since the calendar turned to 2024, I do think the content has been a little bit more unique and original. Uh, I, the live streams we did for uh, the Rose Bowl was great. Um, you know, I love the video, the Lions videos and the frat video in uh, Ann Arbor. I like Chris and company a lot. Like, I think there's been more of it. I'm, I'm not going to say I ever gave up, but I, there was definitely a time where my number one focus was solely blogging. Um, and then, and it's just, look, company made the decision they had to make. I did what I felt like I had to do. I'm not a terrible writer, but I'm not a blogger. I'm a content creator. I'm a talker. I'm, I, I like, and so I did actually start to feel a little bit better just putting some stuff out there. Um, if it was socially acceptable to strangle geese at the local park, how would I and how often? I wouldn't strangle geese, but I'd choke a chicken. Uh, Dave wanted me in Michigan. There was never any discussion about that. Um, financially, it wouldn't have made sense. Uh, I'm not just saying this because he was on my show, but it is, it is Scooble. Okay. This is just my line of thinking here. And I'm just throwing out a, a random number. My tiger videos do range from about 20,000 views a night, um, to, 200,000 views a night. Um, to me, that's a lot of eyeballs. So 162 games, and I, I'm just throwing this number out there. For 162 games at $200 a, a video, it's thir $32,400. Um now there's also Michigan football videos and Lions videos. So I'll say I'll throw out another 50 videos just throughout the year that I'll make. Um, 
fifty times two hundred. That's another ten thousand. Like that might seem lofty, but I'm sorry, these are legit. You know, those are legit numbers. Um. So YouTube is a bit is a lot different. Uh, but through ad spaces and monetization through Twitter, I mean, I that, I could make a livable wage, especially with the money that I'm already have. Uh, I'm about to. I just applied for that monetization. I'm looking into all that stuff now. Let's say I kept my head down and kept blogging, making content. Do I think I would have gotten renewed? That's a really good question. Um, Probably, yeah. Probably, but I would have tried to push um, for going to Chicago, and I don't think they would have let me. Um, so, it, I mean, that's that's ultimately what it was. The, the company wanted different things. I wanted to be in the, in the, the thick of things. Um, and that wasn't the case. Um, but I bet, yeah, if I would have shut the fuck up, I, I probably would have gotten renewed, yeah. Um, because what what what's what's too bad, and again, I, I take responsibility for this. Is like Dave did legitimately like me for quite a while, um, and I think like a lot of people there, I just they got sour to me, and it wasn't even so much sour to me as much as the attitude and just kind of the way things went. And I, I get it, I get it. You know, you can't take can't take it back. You just got to grow from it. We're working on it, Casey. I mean, I have not been super active over the last month because I just feel, um, you know, I feel like I'm in a pretty good place. You know, okay. I, I hate to keep fucking harping on this. That gets really overblown. I think that appearance was like in a lot of ways, like the death nail in terms of the way people viewed me and the vibes or lack of vibes that I brought. But the myth that like that happened and then, like, I was told, leave us alone. That's not true. I mean, I was in – I was at the awards, like, a few months later. Um, it was a bad moment, but it wasn't, like, a devastating, like oh, – it was devastating. But it wasn't a career ender. Yeah, I know. To me, though, like, the, the harder I try to let it go – the more people are just going to bring up, like, I feel like you kind of wet people's appetite at least by talking about it a little bit. You can. Yeah. Like I said, I'm working on that. I, I applied for that uh, today. Am I considered going to the dozen live show in Chicago? You know what, man? Originally, Julian, I had uh, probably not now, no. And I love the dozen. I still do. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think I've probably made things awkward enough. I don't know. Um, if I went, I wouldn't make it like a thing. Like I would just. I'm not. I wouldn't do fucking content. Um. Do I think a company will hire you or is the route monetization? Right now, I think the route is the independent stuff. Um, but, um, you know, in, in the long term, it'd be cool to be a part of a company. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea if I went there dressed as Spider-Man. And just didn't take the mask off ever. It might be too obvious, though. It's the one guy that would go dressed as fucking Spider-Man. Everybody gets one. All right, a few more here. Good stream tonight. Mental health has to be better, no longer being a Barstool Reddit character. I, I mean, I think they still reference me. Um, 
Yes. I mean, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> It, I mean, it does suck that, like, I'll forever be a punchline in that. Um, but, you know, there's nothing I can do about it now. Is Nicholas Cage underrated? Um, I think... Uh, there was a time where he was viewed as very overrated. I No, I... I well... Not anymore. No, maybe a few years ago he was, but he's done so many good projects over the last several years. I think like people have come around to him. Uh, better Tiger Kinsler or Fielder? Um, uh, Kinsler. Was the Omaha trip rough last year? Vibes felt off. It was, yes. Um, and so much of that was, that was about, and I hate to use this as an excuse, but, you know, when Mincy and I were there, the built-in content was following that one team. It was following Ole Miss. That was the story. To Carl's credit, he never tried to replicate that. I think that was great. He tried to do new things, and he carried me. He really did. But I was that was my first really big extended trip out of the house in sobriety. I spent a heavy majority of it at places where people were just loading up on alcohol. And I just never felt super comfortable. And uh, I should have I should have done a little bit more due diligence because I know Carl worked really hard. If um if that could happen again, um I think he might have been better off taking Clemmer. I think Clemmer probably would have had a little bit more, definitely been more receptive to some of that stuff and a little more open. Um so I, yeah, uh, in my time there, I, I I struggled kind of with what to do because Carl's a very, very social person and I like to be, but I just have a ton of anxiety. So I just kind of watched him work and then I just went to like baseball games. Um, so it was, I, I ultimately think the content we put together was fine, but um, yeah, it was, I had a hard time. Uh, all publicity is good publicity until people start accusing you of crimes. Then, then that kind of goes, goes out the window, Arnold. Uh, I mean, I've been most successful on Twitter, obviously. Um, I would guess, I know he's very, you know, highly regarded. Um, he seems pretty content here. Uh, but yeah, it's possible. I mean, he'll be in the running. I mean, I, I would guess if Dave, Ro if the Dodgers don't win the world series, Dave Roberts gets fired. He'd have to be like one of the first in line. Right. You know what's weird, Andrew, is in general, most pitching coaches, they don't get offered a ton of managerial jobs. From what I've got, I don't think he has much interest in that. I think he likes where he's at. I think he uh, he likes being AJ's right-hand man. He likes being the pitching coach. He likes the responsibilities that come with that. Um, and, and I just 
seeing what he posts on social media and, and knowing a little bit that I do. I mean, he's got, uh, he's got a beautiful family. Like he's got a, a young child. Like, I don't think he has any intention of, of, you know, having a huge overhaul in his life. Most overrated player in baseball right now. I always default to Tyler glass. Now, now I've heard he's a super nice guy and he has amazing stuff, but I, it's not even him. It's just when I see top 10 lists of best pitchers in baseball, the last thing I would ever do is put a pitcher on there who year in and year out fails to even qualify for an ERA title. Um, and yet I always like, I'm sorry. If you think Tyler Glass knows a better pitcher than Tarek Skubal, you're out of your fucking mind. Like that's, he's not like, and even in the moments when he's been healthy, like he's shit in October. Um, you know, it looks like Oppenheimer has a great build. Great, great build. Um, great stuff, but he's never, He's never had an elongated stretch where I'm like, this guy fucking rules. All right, y'all. I will probably bow out for now. Good questions tonight. Good vibes. Appreciate y'all asking the questions and staying curious. Uh, I'm curious like a cat. A lot of my friends call me whiskers. So appreciate y'all. Talk to you guys real soon. Have a good one. Peace and happiness.